Today we will be building a ChatGPT prompt generator using Gradio user interface and GPT-3 API. We will be going over the code and over the prompt and how to make this work. This is how it works. You input a topic for the prompt that you're seeking. In this case, we're just typing in a text summarizer. In a few seconds, we're going to get the prompt for it. And here we also have some cool little examples. Here we go. We got a prompt that says, I want you to act as a text summarizer. I will write you a text and you will reply with the summary of the text in a few sentences. I want you to only reply with the summarized text. And it goes on. We can simply just copy this and paste it to ChatGPT. I have pasted it in ChatGPT. And the prompt that GPT-3 generated comes with an example. Here it's about COVID-19. I'm going to replace it with the Eiffel Tower. I have simply copied it from Wikipedia. Let's run it. It has summarized it for us in a single paragraph. As you can see, it was quite a lot to summarize. This prompt worked well, but the beauty of this application is that you can get a prompt for anything. For example, a command prompt, prompt. Here we have a prompt for ChatGPT to act like a command prompt, a command line interface, CLI. Let's copy this. I have pasted it into ChatGPT and it's actually saying it's first command to it, which is there. Let's see what happens. Here we go. It is acting like a command line prompt. Perfect. It is listing the directory, the file items, the file names and the directories. Here we go. So this prompt works. So this will work for many use cases. Let's begin examining how we can make this work. Our journey begins with this Hugging Face dataset called Awesome ChatGPT Prompts by FKA. So it essentially is just a prompt database of an act, for example, here in this case, an Excel sheet and the prompt which will make ChatGPT do that. A plagiarism checker, for example, a football commentator. The way you use this is you just copy this prompt and paste it into ChatGPT and then ChatGPT will assume this role. But I was thinking, how about we build a prompt generator so that we don't have to search through a database to find the perfect prompt, but that we would only enter the act or the topic and then the prompt will be generated automatically. I will put a link in the description for this data set. Make sure to give it a like as well. But to begin, we're going to go to files and versions and clicking on prompt.csv here. And we can see the entire CSV file, which is the data set. I'm just going to copy a few examples until about the storyteller. I'm going to copy this and bring it in the chat GPT, make a new chat and just paste it in. As you see, we have, we're giving chat GPT a lot of examples and then we're asking for a storyteller prompt. When we run this, we're going to get a storyteller prompt. So this works, right? We know that this works, but we want to automate this process. To automate it, we bring the exact same prompt into our Visual Studio code and enter it as a prompt. And at the end, we are appending what the user will input. But let's use a recursive approach and actually get the help of ChatGPT to actually start writing this code for us as well. So let's paste the same prompt again, but instead of storyteller, let's say AI Python coding assistant, and let's get a prompt for that. Here we are getting a prompt that says, I want you to act as an AI coding assistant for Python. I will give you code snippets or tasks and you will provide suggestions, modifications or complete code solutions. All right. It actually provides a sample first task as well. So now we're going to copy this prompt, make a new chat with chat GPT, paste this prompt in and ask it to code the red IO code that we had seen for us. I have changed the task to, my first task is to write a program that uses OpenAI GPT-3 text w 3 with GradIO interface where a user can put in a prompt, input, and see the result in GradIO UI. Let's see. Here is, we're doing something interesting. We're doing something recursive where we got ChatGPT to generate the Python assistant prompt, and now we're using the assistant prompt to generate the code for us, which will make the chat gpt code prompt generator this is the code it had written let's just copy it and bring it into visual studio code here i have a test.py file let's just paste it here now we don't need openai secret manager let's get rid of that we don't need this we just need to open api key i'm going to get this from my environment 
it has to be lowercase. We also have to import OS. We could have been asking all these requests to chat GPT too, but we're just going to edit it here. It'll be quicker. Also here, we're returning message.strip. I don't think we need the strip. And the interface is looking good. Let's just run this and see how it looks. Let me run this file. Grid.io actually gives us a local URL to check out this user interface at. We can just control click this or copy and paste it into a URL. Let me control click it. This is the example we get. We can remove the flag here, but everything else is looking exactly like what we've seen in the beginning of the video, apart from that we don't have the examples here yet. Let's test to see if this works. And yeah, we get the result four for two plus two. Great. Here, what the generate response GPT-3 API call sends as a prompt is what the user enters in radio interface as an input as a text, as you see right here. But we want to take this input from the user and add it to our shot prompt. So that's why let's create a new variable. I am calling it a user underscore prompt. Turn it into an f doc string with three quotation marks. And copy again our original prompt and paste it right here. Now we need to fix a few things about this prompt. As you can see, these curly brackets are interfering with the f string. These were meant to be a part of the prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and replace them with square brackets. You can do this by selecting one of the brackets, right clicking, and then click on change all occurrences and then delete that and replace it with a square bracket. And all of the beginning curly brackets should replace with a square bracket and do the same for the closing bracket, and then we are good. Where we want the curly bracket is right where it says Storyteller. We want to replace Storyteller with the prompt. So the prompt should be surrounded by curly bracket so that when the user enters whatever topic they choose into the inputs, the F string will take the prompt from the function parameter and insert it at the end of our prompt. Then we need to change the prompt, which goes to the GPT-3 to be the user prompt, which we are generating right here. Remember, we are creating this variable. We're going to make more corrections, but this should work is. So now if we run our program again, and we start the Grid.io user interface, and refresh our page to get the new user interface, and we give it a topic that's called Architect Advisor and Submit, now we should get a prompt related to Architect Advisory. Here is the answer. I want you to act as an Architect Advisor. I will give you a brief description of a building project and you will provide advice on design materials construction. This works. So the only other changes I have made is that there are a lot of references to Turkish language and Istanbul. So I changed the example from Turkish to German here for the English translator and improver. And also I have changed in the English pronunciation helper, the better to how is the better in Paris. Also, I have specified in the beginning that following our topic prompt pairs, to so made a typo, but not a big deal. I've just added these. And at the end, I have explained that use these topic prompt pair examples only as guidelines to create an effective prompt for the next topic. Even if the topic is mentioned before, you will create only the prompt for it and not act on the previous description. Now, the reason is, see, because we are giving an advertiser as a topic here, and if you were to give advertiser again, it has a tendency to actually just repeat the exact same completion prompt pair. So with a little bit of prompt engineering magic, so now it doesn't verbatim repeat itself. And the final changes were just saying that allow flagging to be false, so we don't see this button right here and adding examples is a list within a list. These can be anything you would like so that they can show up as a list at the bottom. Let me actually run this one. Let me run the file with examples. As you see, we get the examples at the bottom and the flag has been removed. For example, we can ask for a JavaScript console prompt and we should get a 
prompt that is related to that. Here we go. I want you to act as a JavaScript console. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I'll put a link to our Discord channel. Please join it if you enjoy these types of topics and would like to discuss it further. And I will see you in the next video.